this is indeed a disturbing universe. Hello, greetings, and welcome. Welcome to the Stereo 999 YouTube channel. I am your host, the artist formerly known as Stereo Steve. The guy who spends so much on records he can't afford a new hat. Okay, so this week I am going to talk about records that it took me a long, long, long time to find. And uh, I don't know if it's anything really that earth shattering. It's more just kind of personal stuff and like memories I'm trying to get back to. But you know, sometimes it's sometimes it's like a fever, you know, and uh, the only the only cure is more cowbell in the form of uh, the record that the cowbell is recorded on. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, I think anybody who's been in this hobby long enough will have, you know, either in their mental file cabinet or written online or written on a piece of paper or something, certain titles that have just eluded them. And, you know, a lot of times for me, it's something I used to have a long time ago. And then it just, after it left my collection, I just never saw it again for years and years and years. There's some that I probably never would have found again if it wasn't for the internets. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't found everything. I mean, that's the whole fun of this is not finding everything. So there's still something to find. But anyway, I'm going to do, I think, maybe eight or nine records that that I found that were kind of special and took a long time. And uh, yeah, we'll see how long it's taken to find some records. Okay, well, let's get into it. All righty then, Steve. Show me what you got. Okay, Mr. Gopher. So these are some records that it took me a long ass time to find. And uh, at the top of the stack, this is that Studebaker Lark jazz compilation. I've already talked about this in two other videos. So I will just put a link to one of the videos where I already talked about this. And uh, you can do your own research. But anyway, how did this start? It started in 2003. I found this record called Freak Out USA. And it's a 60s psych compilation on the Sidewalk label. After I finally found a clean copy of this record, I realized that the reason I was looking for this record is because in 1983, somebody made a uh, compilation cassette tape for my birthday. And it included the song Poisons in My Body by International Theater Foundation. Something, something you imagine uh, Peter Fonda freaking out to. And anyway, I'm like, okay, 83, 2003. It took me 20 years to find this damn record. What are some other records that it took me a long ass time to find? Okay, now I did a whole video about Sugarloaf. And this was the album, Don't Call Us, We'll Call You. That corresponds to their second hit song after Green Eyed Lady. But anyway, Sugarloaf, I became a fan of Sugarloaf um, in probably in 1979. One of my uh, one of my grade school friends and I kind of bonded over Green Eyed Lady. And uh, then I was discovering that they had other albums out besides that first album. I found I got a song on eight track tape and I found Spaceship Earth in a bargain bin. But it was not 
until 2003 again at a swap that I found a copy of this. Um, when I was six years old, my family moved from uh, suburbia to the big city. And there were some records that I associate with listening to on my little portable record player at five years old in suburbia that did not make the move from there to the city for one reason or another, got lost or stepped on or whatever. And this was one of them, Blasts from the Past, 16 Collector's Goodies. So this came out in the early 60s, kind of a KTEL-esque compilation of doo-wop music. And of course, the song that really got my attention was Roaches by the Court Jesters. Don't leave your food on the table. Why, honey, why? Because of those roaches. Oh, 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 oh. My sketchy memory remembered roaches, remembered blast records, and uh, at some point in the 80s, I found a cassette of this for some reason, and titled 16 Collector's Goodies, and I saw roaches, and I saw blast records, and I never really took cassette tapes seriously. I always felt like they were placeholders until I found the vinyl. So I don't know where that cassette tape went to, but I uh, went on eBay in probably like 2007 and searched 16 collector's goodies and found this for pretty cheap. And this is the same record. Okay. Next one is a single. And this one... I remember trying to Google, I forgot the band name, but I remembered Hot Running Soul, and I remembered uh, What You See Is What You Get. And I picked up this record when I was a kid, probably in the early 70s, in a thrift store. And I think I was hoping that it was the dramatics, What You See Is What You Get which no, this is an entirely different song. Then the A-side, Hot Run and Soul, was a pretty cool jam. 2011, I finally found online a seller selling this and bought it. Back to these 1950s compilations. This is one I would like totally gave up on even finding. There's still not a whole lot of information about this. It's a double compilation called The Record King. Very un-googleable title. And uh, I think uh, one of my uncles gifted me this in a box of records when I was like in the second grade. And there were some songs that really stuck with me. Ya Ya by Lee Dorsey. And uh, some of the other 50 songs I knew from my parents. There's Something on Your Mind, Part 2. A uh, dramatic tale of, of a double murder that I think was kind of played kind of campy for comedy. But I actually thought it was kind of scary. <laughs> Nina Simone, I Love You Porgy. I Don't Love You No More by Jimmy Norman. One of the best intros of any song. Hello. Hello, girl. Who's this? This is me, and I just want to let you know I don't love you no more.
Preparations for the recording process begin. A disc, a celluloid-like substance revolving on the turntable, gets ready to receive its musical impressions. The recording stylus is lowered into position to inscribe its musical message, waiting now to be galvanized into action by the electrical vibration. No, I can't see. I'm blind. Blind! <laughs> April Fool's! Venerable little cars, one enjoys a bell ringing excursion up and down the San Francisco hills. Now, kiddies, it's time to realign your hi-fi set. We are now going to uh, generate a tone for you. What is the tone, Harry? Oh, yeah. One million cycles. A special plastic material. Just the right amount for one record is pressed into place. As the mold closes, heat and pressure force this material into every convolution of the stamper. The result, a playing record ready for use. A flawless reproduction of the human performance in the recording studio. Here's a little segment I like to call Compact Disc Corner. Because it's compact discs and they're in the corner. And we'll see if this wonky selfie stick doesn't fall over as it's attached to the counter ever so precariously. So these are these are CDs I either picked up recently or dug out and have been listening to on the little boom box here in the corner that you can't see. But uh, got some jazz here. This uh, this I picked up recently. I I have like tons of Charlie Parker in my collection, but I realized I did not have this album. This is Bird and Diz, of course. Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. And this is them uh, reuniting around 1950. Because, of course, in the late 40s, Dizzy Gillespie left Charlie Parker's group and was replaced by Miles Davis. But this is on Verve. And uh, a lot of these tracks originally appeared on 78s. Like I said, recorded in 1950. But... Uh, I could not say no to this all-star lineup. Charlie Parker on alto sax, Dizzy Gillespie on trumpet, Thelonious Monk on piano, Curly Russell on bass, and Buddy Rich on drums with some previously released outtakes. And... Uh, this was originally uh, BMG mail order because it has the little BMG stamp instead of a barcode where the barcode would be. Neat. All right. Um, some more jazz. This is uh, Ken Burns jazz. There were a series of these Ken Burns jazz compilations came out same time as the uh, Ken Burns jazz documentary sometime in the early 2000s, I think. This one's Ornette Coleman, and it's a pretty solid best of. It's got, you know, classic early tracks like Lonely Woman, Congeniality, Ramblin', um, first take of Free Jazz, and uh, theme from a symphony from Dancing in Your Head. So it kind of spans that much of his career. And I also got in that same series, uh, 
Charles Mingus, and again, collection of classic tracks, Haitian fight song, Goodbye Pork Pie Hat, Better Get Hit in Your Soul, um, uh, and one of my favorite titles, it ends with, The Shoes of the Fisherman's Wife Are Some Jive Ass Slippers. And, uh, okay, this was kind of a childhood favorite. Um, I, I impressed my fifth grade teacher that I was into this album. This is uh, Dave Brubeck Quartet, Dave Diggs Disney. And uh, couldn't turn down a, a, a CD. It's got two bonus tracks. And. I can hear this album crackle free because my vinyl copy of it is totally beat. Another BMG. But this is cool because it doesn't sound like a kid's record. I mean, he's taking these songs like Give a Little Whistle and When You Wish Upon a Star, Someday My Prince Will Come. And they're doing solid jazz combo interpretations of these songs it's not cheesy at all okay and uh, I got three more we're gonna be more of an experimental tip here this is glands of external secretion and my cat is an alien split EP glands of external secretion being a uh, Nels Klein collaboration. My cat is an alien being an Italian experimental noise group. And there's like a series of these. And this is volume five from the earth to the spheres series. Oh, okay. Okay, I see what we got here. We got Barbara Manning, Seymour Glass, produced by Greg Freeman. Okay, so this is some, some uh, Bay Area, California stuff. And uh, the other My Cat is an Alien split is with... Jackie O motherfucker from Portland and again that's volume three of the series and last but not least Angus McLeese and it's called Brain Damage in Oklahoma City Angus McLeese was the original drummer for the Velvet Underground, and he quit because they weren't experimental enough for him. He didn't want to be told when to start playing and when to stop playing. He wanted complete chaos and anarchy. And uh, so again, some nice long experimental pieces on this. Okay, well that concludes Compact Disc Corner. But like I said, ungoogleable title. I would always get King Records when I tried to search for this. But then, one day, 2015, maybe 2016, but I'm going to just say 2015 because that's what I wrote in my notes. Somebody on Discogs was selling one. So it's actually pretty cheap. So now, again, I have the record king. This one I probably could have found sooner than I did, but I was determined to actually find it in the wild, sitting in a used record store. I didn't want to like buy it off the internet. And this is Count Basie and his orchestra Breakfast Dance and Barbecue. This is one of my dad's records, and this was from Suburbia. And 
This was a, a special late night concert. They, they took the stage at two o'clock in the morning and played into the morning. There's even a song, five o'clock in the morning. They do a nice version of Duke Ellington's in a mellow tone on the roulette label. Last but not least, this I found literally a week ago. I mean, I saw this online for way more than I wanted to pay, but a couple weeks ago, I saw it on Discogs for an affordable price and I picked it up. So basically the single Mexicali Baby backed with Mexican rock and roll by the Rio Rockers and uh, the Kogars that I showed in a previous video covered Mexican rock and roll. I'm pretty sure the uh, Flat Duo Jets covered Mexicali Baby, but the promo copy of this was a six song EP which is very unusual. I mean, four song EPs were not so unusual, but this was a six song EP. Also included Too Young to Be Blue and Bessie Baby by Jerry Reed. Doesn't sound like the same Jerry Reed that did the country music later on. This was more kind of 50s pop, early rock and roll. It was from 1958. And then it also has Tail Light and Snuggle Bunny by Sammy Hagen and the Viscounts. Another, you know, you go to Google that, you get Sammy Hagar. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same Viscounts that did Harlem Nocturne and had uh, instrumental hits, except a uh, little more, a uh, little more rockabilly with a frontman singer. So yeah, so I think this is the record in my collection that it took me the longest amount of time to find. And I've got an honorable mention. This is an honorable mention because, because it's a reissue. This is the Farm Band, which was the uh, Stephen Gaskin Commune. Sometimes when we come together, we just sit quietly. Sometimes we talk. Sometimes we make music. But what we come together for is communion. And uh, yeah, the farm based in Tennessee was kind of a hippie commune. And they had a band. And this record's from 1972. And uh, I remember maybe being 13 years old and having this for some reason. I think, I think my mom found it and said, oh, this looks interesting. And uh, it's got the poster. But I wasn't sure if I even actually had it. You know, it was kind of like a dream, except that sometime in the late 90s, digging through some stuff, I found the original poster from an original copy of the farm band record. But I have no idea what happened to the actual record. And I'd never seen it again until 2003 when it was reissued by a karma. But this is, this is a cool record of ohm chanting and just long hippie jams and songs that take up the whole side where they start to jam and improvise and then it just kind of slows down and speeds back up. And it's, it's the real deal as far as like homegrown hippie type of jams. Alrighty then.
Okay, well, according to the fortune cookie, I'm about to make a new friend. Well, that depends on you, friend. Are you going to like this video? Subscribe? Leave a comment? Do you want to be my friend? This is my philosophy for the friends of Venus. <laughs> I want you to study it and memorize it so that you can go out with me and convert the non-believer. I'll study hard and let you know when I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Very well on your feet. Uh, let's pretend that uh, I am a non-believer and you try and convert me. Hey, you, non-believer. Good start. <laughs>